evening, everyone. If you'd like to take your seat at this time. I'd like to call this meeting to order, and if you would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for 10 seconds. Silence. Thank you. you. May be seated. Lauren, if you would call the roll, please. Commissioner Paul? Here. Commissioner Hosper? Here. Commissioner Vaughn? Here. Vice Mayor Vaughn? Here. Mayor Kennedy? Here. Thank you, Lauren. We'll start with our presentations. Our first one is with Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Would one of the sheriffs like to come up tonight? Good evening. Hi. Can you state your name for everyone? My name is Corporal Chris Boyer, and I'll be presenting, or, uh, presenting you guys the uh, September statistics for any of our speech. Um, in the month of September, as far as property and person uh, type of crimes, uh, they're down from August to only uh, seven incidents. There's a total of 11 people arrested for the month of September. Uh, we had a total of uh, six misdemeanor arrests. Uh, we had uh, two felony traffic arrests, three traffic misdemeanor arrests. So kind of break down of those arrested for the month of September. There's a total of 848 events in the city uh, with 1,160 units responding. Uh, the majority of those calls, uh, obviously all of them were self-initiated or dispatch calls. Majority of them were traffic stops, 260 traffic stops. 146 directed patrols and then 85 uh, house checks, part of the house check program. That was probably makes up about half of uh, the responses. Crashes were down, only two uh, reported crashes in the month of September, uh, both on Gulf Boulevard. And then finally, there's a total of 283 uh, citations and warnings. Uh, that's a mixture of citations and warnings uh, with that percentage. Uh, 71%, 201 of the traffic stops were resulted in warnings, and uh, 21 resulted in citations. And then we had a uh, 60 parking violations. So that kind of breaks down our traffic enforcement. Any questions? Any questions for the sheriff tonight? Land? Yeah, I have one tonight. Uh, I'm looking at the September 2023. And as I do, I see ordinance violation. Do you have any, uh, I understand that's a bucket. What does that entail? So ordinance violations can be anything from an illegally parked vehicle, uh, which is majority of the type of ordinance violations uh, that uh, deputies come across. But anything that falls under your guys' specific ordinances, uh, not necessarily state law. Would noise be in that? Noise could be in that. Okay. And but there is a separate noise. But noise could be added. Yeah, we have we had 13 noise complaints in September. Okay. If you, uh, yeah, because they have the uh, the ordinance violations. It depends on so a noise will come out as a separate uh, calls for service. Uh, it depends on how it's how it's because if it's called in, it'll come in as a noise complaint. Uh, usually, if a <coughs> deputy generates something, it'll generate under ordinance violation. So it's kind of. A, and are y'all using the equipment that we had discussed prior? We uh, one of our previous city commission meetings, we had discussed a decibel meter yes. that all the officers were being trained on. Correct. Our, uh, in fact, our deputies, uh, you know, because uh, as you guys well aware, every six months uh, we have personnel changes and you know people come and go uh, from the city. So we just made sure that everybody was up to speed. Uh, I believe last month on uh, they, they received a refresher on the decibel meter. Um, a, another question kind of off from this, uh, I'm, I'm seeing these violations, do we keep track of whether or not they're Indian Rock Speech citizens or whether or not they're outside of Indian Rock Speech? You're looking at a driver's license when you're taking these calls. The answer to that is no. The answer to that is no? Okay. Any 
Any other questions? No. No. Uh, one of the things that I, I just want the public to know is um, <coughs> offenses are way down compared to last year at this time. Yes, ma'am. And I mean, significantly, we have uh, in 2022, September, we had 106 violations of some sort, and we had seven this year. And that, that's, be, that's great. So um, thank you for your time tonight, and I appreciate you. All right, thank you. I'm not understanding that. What's, which one is? One if you look at the front page, right here. Mm -hmm. Those are our UCR property and person crimes. Two. It's the third one. Okay. It's 106 2022 year to date. Yes. In 2023 year to date is 143. Yes, those are that's year to date, not for that month. Yeah, correct. So it's higher over 2023 than 2022. I, I was Not necessarily. That's uh, the, the September, that's how many reported UCR crimes we had up until that date. However, if you look in column two, September 23, 2023, that is just for the month of September. We don't have a, we don't have a column for, right, yeah, if you look at the September 2023 year to date, it's 143. So technically, we're up if you look at it that way. So crime is higher. Correct. Okay. I'm talking for the month. For the month. Month, 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 month. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hart. Thank you. The report of Pinella Suncoast Fire and Rescue. Uh, would you like to come forward? <clears throat> Please state your name for the record. Absolutely. Uh, my name is uh, Chief Stoneberg. I'm uh, here on behalf of uh, Chief, Chief Davison to present the uh, end of fiscal year report for Indian Rocks Beach. Uh, for the month of September in Indian Rocks Beach, there were approximately 65 emergency responses and 56 uh, medical and non fire related. <coughs> um, for the fiscal year in Indian Rocks, there were uh, 657 EMS calls and 229 uh, fire-related calls. Um, and then for the, uh, the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2023, uh, district-wide for the whole PSFRD, um, we responded to 4,042 calls for emergency services and 9,512 uh, fire department training hours were conducted for the fiscal year, including that, that includes fire training and medical training. Um, fire prevention has completed 100% of its annual inspections. Uh, Short-term rental inspections are underway, and registration can be done through our website at psfrd.org. Um, uh, a new fire prevention officer has been hired, uh, Stacy Schwab, which she starts uh, October 18th. Her primary role will be uh, public education, fire prevention, and short-term rental inspection. And that comes at no cost from the district. It's all um, funded by the uh, uh, inspection revenue. Um, we were, uh, were proud to announce that the, uh, we were awarded the SAFE grant um, through uh, FEMA, which allows us to hire four additional firefighters, 100% funded for three years from FEMA. Um, this will be used for full-time, you know, uh, Engine 26 down in Indian Shores to respond up here. Uh, this will increase our fire protection and our ISO rating. The total awarded was 1.14 million over three years. And then we'll be issuing, um, and they're going to they're going to be issuing an RFP for the building of Station 28 on the mainland which will also host our emergency operations center. Um, and we're looking to get that contracted by the first of the year. Any questions? Any questions? No. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. At this time, we're going to open the public comment. Each speaker will have three minutes. Any member of the audience may come forward, give their name and address, and state any comment or concern they may have regarding any matter over which the City Commission has control 
excluding agenda items. All statements made to the City Commission shall be made to the City Commission as a whole, not directed to any individual City Commission member, and no personal or slanderous remarks shall be permitted. No speaker shall be interrupted, and no debate shall take place between the Speaker and the City Commission. Is there anyone who'd like to come forward at this time? Hi, Tom. Good evening. I'm Tom Tremont. I live at 12900 Bond Road in Largo. As a self-appointed unofficial ambassador of our nation's blood banks, I'm simply here today encouraging the good folks, citizens, and employees of IRB to give blood. Here's some facts that you may or may not be aware of. About 40% of the population is eligible to donate, but of that, less than 10% actually do. Every three seconds, someone in the nation needs a blood donation. One out of every 10 people who enter the hospital will need a blood transfusion. There is no substitute for blood. It can only come from donors. And you can't do it on your phone, or you can't, you can't do it online, so I'm telling you. For those, or excuse me, if every blood donor would donate just one more time each year, there would be no blood shortage. No more blood storages. Uh, there are fringe benefits to giving blood too, as some of you may know. You re receive rewards. A few days, a few decades ago, I became a movie fan, thanks in part to all the regal gift cards that I received from donating, donating blood. You also get free mini health uh, screenings, and the results of those screenings mirror, mirror that of the routine screenings that I had at the, my doctor's office. It's always good to find out your cholesterol is dangerously low. <laughs> if you believe that. Um, just kidding. Please don't report me to political fact. Political fact. <laughs> Certainly there are many people who can't donate for medical reasons, such as having low iron levels or being afflicted by diseases. Others, like myself, had to stop donating because of the drugs that they are on. I didn't realize until recently that the number one reason why people <coughs> say they never donated blood is because nobody asked them to. Well, so I'm asking you, you good folks now, if, if you have the chance, please give blood. If I found out just one person who was listening to this meeting gave blood, that would make my day. If I found out that he or she continued to donate, that would make my money. Um, you know, we all have those days we regret. Maybe we're in an intersection and we hawk our horn to somebody. Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. Or maybe we called the driver an incurable nincompoop, whatever. Um, but then you stop and think, well, you know, the other day I did a good thing. I gave, I gave a, a pint of blood. And no matter what you do for the rest of your life, good, bad, or indifferent, nobody can take that away from you. Uh, thank you uh, for listening to me. I'll be back to make the same spiel maybe in a year or so, even if my cholesterol is dangerous. <laughs> oh, and you really had a car? Do you get all really kinds of good. You yes, you do. Love that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now it's up to I think thirty dollars. Yeah. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, wish I could be in the cake throwing contest. Uh, at uh, Oktoberfest, but uh, since I, I only threw it two feet, I think I was disqualified. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Hi. Linda Newton, 438 Harbor Drive North. I um, want to thank you all for as hard as you're working on our short-term rental programs. And I just ran reports today just to kind of see where we were and where we've been coming and what everybody's been doing. And I'm just going to go over Harbor Drive North first and Harbor Drive South and coming out Harbor Drive. So I looked at my reports today and we have 41 homes back in our area that have to come out Harbor Drive and then they can split out and go different ways. And I think most people have two cars and I think we could have 12 right now, but sometimes we can have only 10, depending if you're new or not. So I thought about how much more traffic is going in and out. If, if, even if they all just came in and registered, 
you've got 82 cars coming in. And then when they all want to leave or get their golf carts and go to the beach or they're walking, and 10 people were in each homes, we have 410 people coming in and out. I used to let my three grandkids go to the park. I don't anymore. I don't know who's there. I don't, I know, just to read it, read it, this month being so low with everything, September in the history of Florida has always been the slowest month for people to be here. And with everybody breaking loose, being able to travel to Europe or do whatever they want now, I can see that our rentals are slower. And I can tell by the traffic. <coughs> by the way, we also have a lot of construction right there in Harbor Drive, so you may wait for quite a while to get through with everything going on. Anyway, um, I bought 20 years ago. I grew up in Pinellas County in a single family home residence. We're not there anymore. We're not, not with that number of people and not feeling comfortable with your grandkids at your home and venturing out. My one granddaughter is 12 right now and she has a girlfriend on Harbor Drive North and it's around the big curve and it scares me to death to let her go there. I'll just let you know. She's beautiful, she's blonde, and so is her friend. And we call between each grandparent to know they made it to each other's home. Anyway, enough of that. You're doing good. You're putting on a great force. Um, I, I am a little disappointed. I see that we have 351 rentals now, and only 78 have done the, um, the, the thing that's called the V whatever it is, VRR. And I don't know what the lag is there. I did run also, I love Excel by the way, a report that compares 2022 rentals. And if you want the copy of this, I'll leave it with you. And it shows you by ETR number who was registered in 2022. And you can see that um, the gold is this year and the blue is the other. And I'll just show you real quick, I'm fine. But, but I do thank you all for where you are. If you see the gold here, I'm not allowed to show that one. If you see the gold here, that shows you all the new people that are now registered since we started pursuing this in 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to come up at this time? Hi, Diane. Hello. I'm Diane Daniel, 309 10th Avenue great to be back in action at Indian Rocks Beach. Um, so as you know, I have a nonprofit vacation donations and my mission is to reduce waste, food waste, item waste, and increase donations, specifically with vacation rentals, but any waste I'm after. Um, so I thought that I would use my time, hopefully every month, just to talk about a little bit about some different things that uh, we could do here. Um, one of them is, so Pinellas County has a goal of zero waste to landfill by 2050. I hope to be around to see that day. And uh, so they are encouraging communities to do different things. Indian Rocks has signed on as a supporter of this initiative. I am in a group of uh, different recycling, different uh, municipalities, and also nonprofits with the county, with the solid waste department, to talk about various recycling issues. And you all could certainly join that group. A lot of the municipalities are in it. One of the things the county solid waste department has is a new label, because one of the problems with recycling is that labeling is all over the place, and no one knows what they can recycle and what they can't. And there's actually a nationwide movement to have a uniform labels. So there are new labels available through the county, and I can get exactly the person's name to, but I'm sure you have your own contact there, so I really hope you'll look into getting those labels. And I know that it's continual uh, challenge for education, but for instance, on my walk here, I saw a house at um, Bay Pines and 12th that had a very full recycling bin, and at the very top was a bag of cans and a plastic bag. Well. You can't recycle a plastic bag. So I don't know what's going to happen to that. Does that mean the whole bin is contaminated and it's not even going to be put? I have no idea. But all I know is that they're not doing it correctly. And it's, it's, it is a, a continual challenge. But there are 
rules and hopefully we can keep reminding people of what they are. I learned some new things when I looked at the label that I didn't know. The other thing that um, I talked to the city about and I'm going to follow up on this more is to have some kind of a an exchange where there's so many beach items that get thrown out every week. Umbrellas, coolers, chairs, uh, toys. We have to leave a toy, take a toy, but we only have six of those. So I'd like, love to increase those and find a way to be able to reuse all these things that people come in and buy at Publix and then leave. Sometimes they stay at the vacation rentals, but other times they just get thrown out. So that's it for now. Thank you for your time and see you soon. Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward at this time? Hi, John. Good evening. Jonathan Steele, 448 Harbor Drive Sound. Um, I want to thank the city. I uh, saw the number of uh, vacation rentals that have already been inspected and uh, uh, passed their test. So it's good to see. I know it's uh, starting from ground zero. I think it's good to see how much. I think it's a great idea for you, the commissioners, to know monthly how many new homes we've lost to short-term rentals, and also how many of them have uh, passed the test, have been inspected and such. And I want to follow up on what Linda said. That she was talking about 41 short-term rentals now that are driving past Land's house. Um, even at 70% occupancy, that's 14,000 transients each year driving, walking, biking by his house, and everybody else that's on Harbor Drive. So it's, um, it's so destructive to a neighborhood. Uh, another residential house went up for sale, also near land. Uh, the listing starts off, located in a highly lucrative area where short-term rentals, in capital letters, are not only allowed, but highly sought after. So basically, the destruction of our neighborhoods continues. Unfortunately, a resident, uh, has changed the, modified the um, IRB BTR list so that people can see who's on their street, how many short-term rentals, because that's important. If you're buying in the neighborhood, if you live in that neighborhood, if you're a realtor, you should know how many. You know, we'll just run this by you. Uh, 20th Avenue, 25, 30 on Harbor Drive North and South, 26 on Bay Boulevard, 18 on 10th, 12 on 11th, 20 on 12th, 54 on 1st Street, 15 on 2nd, 12 on Bay Pine, 11 on Bahia, sorry Joe. So you've got to know about these things. You've got to know how badly this town is being ripped apart by this and destroyed house by house. This problem, as we all know, I don't have to spend too much time on the history, was caused by the commission. They made a negligent action, actually two, and that's the reason why we're having this problem as opposed to Bellar Beach or Clearwater. It's up to the commission to take care of this. There's a number of things we propose, five things that we've done to get short-term rentals out of residential areas. I hope we don't see this commission sitting on its hands and watching uh, the fabric of this community continue going downhill. So thank you and uh, see you at Oktoberfest. John, is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Jerry Newton, 438, Harbor Drive North. I'm going to ramble a little bit and con even contradict myself. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the very, thank you all, whoever uh, uh, writes and puts together the newsletter, October, November email because the very first paragraph is a very clear description of what's required to be a short-term rental. I don't think anybody could read that and not understand what it takes to register, to pay your taxes, and to follow the rules. So the next process is how many, how many of the short-term rental of the 354 BTR numbers <coughs> have actually followed those rules. The best I could tell, maybe 78. That's not many. <clears throat> the way the list that's published in the website is published, first of all, four times a year isn't enough to understand what's going on in the destruction of your neighborhood. 
There's no reason why that can't be published monthly. I know you all keep records. I know you have a real-time list that you work with. How hard is it to post that so the residents can know what's going on around them? Transparency, please. We don't need to hide the issue. We need to have it obvious and transparent. The B sorted by BTR number is not useful. Short sorted by address with the street number separated from the street name is useful. Then you can go down the street and you can see that there are 30 on my street or 18 on my street. Maybe, maybe post it two different ways because not everybody is Excel literate. Linda can massage those things all day long and make them with a lot of effort, by the way. But why don't we publish that information to be transparent? No phone number for contact. Why not? Why not have a phone number? Everybody's required to have a contact number. Why don't we publish it? Why are we hiding the most, some of the most important bits of information that we need? The yellow highlight evidently is 37 people in no, non-compliant. That's interesting, but I'm sure you all are working on that. That's what, that's what it takes. The rest are all paid and all legal. <clears throat> I'm a little pessimistic on that. Anyway, you guys are doing well. We're making progress. It's better than we had before. But let's keep, let's use this paragraph and enforce it and continue forward. Thank you, Jerry. Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward at this time? Don. What's up, Don? Good Downhouse 2104 Beach Trail. First thing, I want to apologize for the way I look. I I have a lot of respect for this forum, but I was I got a little project going up on Clearwater Lugger Road, Fort Harris. I want to do a food truck patio there. So we were working there, and the clock snuck, snuck up on us. So, uh, and by the way, y'all were glad that happened because I had four people going to come in here and give me their three minutes. You wouldn't have gotten rid of me that fast, okay? So I got three minutes. So that's the good thing, all right? Um, so, um, but when I got to my house, uh, I was going to swap vehicles to get in the convertible. It makes me feel a lot better driving that than the, than the pickup. Um, people came over and they're trying to get to the beach. 21st and 22nd are both shut down. Um, there, and that's a lot of access for those two places. Um, I don't know what's happening on those two. I mean, uh, that for, we, we, we clean those two accesses, there's a lot going on there. So uh, I would appreciate if the city could uh, uh, maybe concentrate on at least one of those. Uh, I, I had one person that said, well, the person uh, that they were renting from said that they had permission to walk across. We have, we have orange fence up, we have no press passing signs, we have all this stuff, do not walk on the property. And so uh, I realized that you know, it's probably not, y'all probably don't care. But anyway, if you could get either one 21st or 22nd working, that way they can, within that one block, they can go. And um, I'm, uh, I don't know, murders, rapists, and pedophiles. Oh my. Okay, see you later. Thank you, Don. Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward at this time? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public comment. We're looking for a report from our city attorney, Randy Mora. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A um, few things. If you haven't yet, as a uh, commissioner, has done your annual training, uh, the annual four hour course on ethics, sunshine law, and public records, I'll be um, through Florida League of Cities University offering a four hour webinar next week on that. I believe there's still registrations open that are in the hundreds at the moment. Uh, beyond that, as it relates to the community, obviously you see some of the agenda items before you this evening. Um, I know one of the, the issues um, particularly interested in is the ongoing litigation. Uh, we presently have seven lawsuits pending against the city. Those actions have all been removed to federal court. Um, the parties have uh, worked together to agree to consolidate those before a single judge. 
Um, that doesn't mean they're just consolidated to a single action at this stage, it's just that they're before single juries um, in the Middle District of Florida. We have uh, responded to the complaints. There's more recently been an amended complaint, and the, our litigation council is evaluating that and determining how best to respond. I'm in regular communication with them to provide them any uh, resources, information, discovery, or other uh, uh, information they may need. So we continue to defend against those suits. I probably shouldn't, but I'm still going to. Um, and I, I know that short-term rentals are an ongoing discourse in your community. Um, when we started this journey a little more than a year ago, revisiting this issue, uh, understandably based on the concerns of the community, I started by, by explaining that whether or not we were going to be successful was critically hinging on how we defined success. And if success was to be defined by banning or ending the existence of short-term rentals in your community, we would not and cannot succeed. Um, nothing in what we've passed, adopted, um, or delivered is designed to limit duration, frequency, or otherwise prohibit short-term rentals in this community. And further to the point, had we not passed any ordinance, um, nothing that we could pass can infringe on private property rights. Every property owner in here has the ability to sell their home to whomever they so wish. And the city uh, has no ability to interfere in that process. And uh, that, that said, um, I don't say that to be insensitive to the concerns of the community, but I want to make sure as my client, the city commission, we are clear um, on expectations, deliverables, and, and what is possible in the modern landscape. Uh, with that said, we are approaching uh, the new, the next legislative session committees have begun to convene. We will track the bills that are filed find their way into committee in the coming weeks and as we um, remain abreast of those developments I will of course update you otherwise uh, I have nothing further to report and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions at this time for Randy? <clears throat> what does moved to federal court entail just you know for the audience? It's no longer in the county court. It's moved down to a federal. Uh, uh, yes. Court. So as it relates to litigation, it's a procedural mechanism. The, the cases, it's a procedural and jurisdictional element. The cases were filed in state court. Some of the claims, though not all, concern the federal constitution, not just the Florida constitution. And based on that, federal courts have both courts have jurisdiction over um, federal constitutional claims. But we thought it best to have that moved. To federal court. The federal court has jurisdiction over the U.S. constitutional claims and what we call pendant jurisdiction or ancillary jurisdiction over the remaining claims. It can resolve them all. If it so desires, it will certainly prioritize those things which are the basis for its jurisdiction. Um, and again, we'll, we are evaluating how that may be impacted by the amended complaint. The amended complaint um, and filed in one of the cases clearly articulates that they are continuing to advance federal constitutional challenges, so we will remain in federal court for the time being. Any other questions? No. Okay. At this time, Greg, would you like to do your report? I would. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, <coughs> the Commission of the Public, a few updates. Um, probably heard, and I've had regular communication with the Commission, but uh, a project that the county is working on is emergency dune construction and temporary erosion control measures project. Uh, we've been working on this for about three weeks. Uh, there's two project areas in IRB, Whitehurst to Central and 20th to 28th. And what that will involve in when they did the work uh, is the uh, hauling in of thousands of loads of sand that's being brought in from a sand pit that's about 80 miles north of here, state approved sand and they'll build berms and then they'll come back, the same contractor will come back and plant seeds on top of the berms. What that requires, the county sent us a list of 52 properties in those two zones and uh, attached to the list was required easements. And particularly Michelle and Frank and our staff have worked real hard. As of this morning, they had 35 of the 52 property, each property owners had signed the required easements. And we think in the next few days we'll get a few more. So even though the deadline was last Friday and we turned in our 
side of the easement, so the county on Monday, we still have the opportunity to add more, so hopefully there'll be a few more property owners that'll, that'll, that'll sign. Uh, for those that did not sign, they'll be passed up, and those sand will be placed in front of their properties, and as, as I indicated to see those, we plan on top of that. As far as the timeline, the county's working on that right now. They've got multiple crews working in different locations. There, uh, there's a crew working at Bel Air Beach. I sent Kelly Levy an email yesterday just to try to get an idea about the timeline, and they just don't have it yet. So, and I think based on what I'm hearing, that they'll start working in IRV probably in a couple weeks, and it will take it will take time. But I just want to go ahead and warn the warn the general public that uh, you're going to see hundreds of dump trucks, independent contract truck truckers. They're going to bring the sand in, so expect traffic delays because they've got to get on and off the beach, um, and what we'll, you know, we we'll have to use some of our uh, roll-on, roll-off beach accesses to get the sand on there. So, you know, but this is a little different than normal beach. And it's not beach. This is not a beach nursery, by the way. The beach is not going to be wider. This is protective measure, measures to protect people's property. Uh, but instead of the typical nursery projects where they use. Uh, barges and they pump the sand on. This is really coming in through Gut Boulevard and we dumped and they'll spread it out up and down the beach. But like the two primary areas are 20th and to, to 20th North and to Whitehurst to Central. Um, as far as beach access closures, there's nine that are closed. Uh, we uh, issued a purchase order to a contractor that was on a pre approved list with the county. They actually have begun the demolition work. Try to what we're trying to do is demo the end of the walkover. So when they bring the sand in, they can build all that back up. Because I've specifically asked the county for uh, even if there's gaps where property owners have not signed, I've asked for them to try to place large quantities of sand around the ends of where the beach ramps are. Um, but <clears throat> there's nine beach accesses closed, and I expect those to be closed for weeks because it's going to take the county time to bring the sand in, plant, and then our contractor will come back in and build the ramps back over on the beach access. But that being said, uh, with nine closed, we have 18 open. Uh, you'll find any other small beach town like us that has 18 beach access, and we would all get a roof for us. Uh, so everybody just has to be patient. We'll get through it. Uh, unfortunately, the county commission allocated, I think, could have not say it's like 47 million. 47 million. Yeah. Yeah, 27 million to do this project. So, Greg, um, just for the clarity for the uh, uh -huh. residents, um, all are all accesses getting dumped some sand? Just it's it's not we, just we've asked for that. Yes. Whether we get there or not, we'll so the, okay. because it's up to the county's judgment on whether they're going to do it or not. Okay. I, I expect for the beach accesses where we lost large quantities for large amount of some sand be to uh, be dumped at uh, those beach accesses, but some may not because some are just, and they're going to get the river, we're not, we're not talking about the whole beach, we're talking about 20th, North, and uh, Whitehurst, Central, so anything in between that, other than our beach ramps where I've asked for sand, there's not going to be any widespread sand up on the beach. This is, <coughs> I've explained this today to a gentleman, you said to remember this is a, a beach, uh, Erosion control project, not a beach nursery project. There's a difference in that. Uh, next thing is Gut Boulevard Underground in Phase 2. Uh, if you ride by the Nature Preserve, you'll see rolls and conduit that are there. That's going to crank up now. And the first phase of that is from 5th to 8th. And there's some, there's some work that has to go kind of back in the neighborhood because we have to do some work with some, some electrical back there. So you'll see a lot of activity with kind of being run and uh, setting of equipment. Uh, this is a multi-year project. So, uh, and we're going to, based on the price, we're going to see how far, far north we make. Then you might have, what are, you, what are your guess on how far north? <laughs> we're going to just north of 12. Yeah. That shows you uh, how expensive this is. Um, but uh, another reason why we split this in phases is that we receive our money from the county, an allocation every year. So instead of the city fronting any of our reserves to pay for this, 
we're splitting this in phases, and that's why we're doing fifth to eighth, and then we'll do the next section when we we'll get to the end of that. Uh, but we have to be finished with this uh, by 2025. Uh, this is a housekeeping information. Uh, we're issuing various purchase orders for capital projects and equipment that were approved as, as part of the 2023-24 budget. Code enforcement, there were 45 parking tickets, three fines, six violation letters, two stop work orders. Today I offered uh, 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 employment, made an offer of employment to an individual for a third code enforcement officer. I just signed the contract two or three weeks ago for the host appliance company. And we're right on track to do what I think we're going to do. It's going to take several months to key all this up. Uh, Dan and Elizabeth and I in City Hall are interviewing for the revenue officer position. We have one more interview Thursday. I think we'll wrap that up. Um, from Nova Moron, we'll give you all, and I've been giving you code, monthly code enforcement reports for months, but We'll give you a monthly uh, vacation rental report that each could be. Uh, the new website development's ongoing. And last but not least, um, you know, one of the three city events that we have is Halifest, and that's a children's event. It's October the 28th, and it's 10 to, 10 to 1 out in the park in front of City Hall. <clears throat> it's going to be bigger than it's ever been. We just have a lot of resources coming in, a lot of equipment, things that kids, children get excited about. And I, I brought this up earlier, but you know, can't be underestimated. I want to thank Crabby Bills again for writing the city a check for $10,000 to pay for uh, Halifest. But yeah, this is, other than the, the uh, Easter egg hunt, yeah, this is like the big thing that we do for children. And I would, I, I would welcome and encourage the commission to come out and help us. It's a fun thing. You see smiling faces. I'll just tell you one quick story because it's meant a lot to me. <clears throat> About three years ago, and Laura, we've been into the panel test for seven, eight years now. Uh, <clears throat> we had you know, a lot of things going on, and a, a gentleman and his wife and three kids walked up to me. <clears throat> they were living in the RV at the time. I don't think they live here anymore now. But they were living at the time, and he just came up to thank me for I said, well, you need to make the whole city because it takes all of us to put this on. And he said, well, we, my children just look forward to this every year. And he said, and, and he reached to hug me and tell me, he said, he said, well, now more than ever, he said, I just really appreciate it. He said, I lost my job yesterday. <clears throat> and and uh, this is a kid-friendly, not alcohol, free thing. And we were a little particular about how we advertise. You know, we don't run ads and uh, uh, HB and, and that, do that. We put the little signs out in the neighborhood to remind the people. And of course, people will love it, so they still come from other places. But it's just a, it's just a great thing, thing to be involved in. And it's fortunate that it's people like Crappy step up and basically cover our costs for doing that. But I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have on anything. Does anyone have any questions for Greg tonight? Okay, Greg, you're going to Yes. Um, regarding the beach accesses, yes, sir. regarding the beach accesses, where they're fixing them, are they replacing the entire boardwalk or just the ends where the boardwalk meets the sand? Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to go back and we demo the back to the existing dim, and then we have to make it ADA compliant to go back down and paste on the topographical elevation of the dunes that the county puts in. So does this mean it won't stop in steps then, that the boardwalk will go all the way to then, the new stand that's brought in? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And that'll stay like that until we have the next door and we'll okay. wash it back out. <laughs> all right, well, so no more steps then. Well, I, I actually had someone <coughs> complain that they broke their foot the other day stepping on the new stand. Well, we, we, we address that. Because <coughs> I, I, we, we had, I think, Dean had an interaction with a larger resident about steps. How was that flash? <coughs> Uh, if you travel around Florida, the majority of beach accesses in Florida are still or not. And uh, we had a question about, well, why don't we have handicap or ADA parking spaces at the beach accesses if we're not going to have rent? Well, number one, we're not required to. And then number two, it gives people the ability on those, and, and remember, we have 27 beach accesses, and most of them have rent. So most of them will have rent, so you finish. 
but it does give, even when we have steps, <coughs> it still gives somebody with that with the IDA issue the ability to park their car, roll up, or whatever the disability is, and sit on the, uh, the benches and things that we have there. Because one of the things we did three or four years ago in conjunction with A2K was we went in and really aggressive, really trimmed back the, the growth around it to use the beach accesses where people could, because at one point you couldn't see the beach where people can come up. So the majority of the beach accesses will be with ramps. Uh, some will still have steps. But by the time we get to sand, until we, like I said, until we have the next door, they all should look like they did before where you can roll off the end of them. Okay, cool. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions for Greg at this time? Not, not really a question, Greg. I, I travel up Cook Boulevard to Clearwater. And I've noticed Bel Air Beach, they literally have, I mean, at 7 o'clock in the morning, they have about 40 dump trucks okay. there. Are they, they're doing very similar to what you're talking about, that's, right? Well, in my report, that's what I was kind of giving the public a heads up on, because that's what's coming here is, you know, where they work in uh, south and uh, down towards Lake Peak Beach, which they had to get a lot more damage than we did. You know, they had 100 trucks at a time like that. So if you think about Gut Boulevard, this is, you know, it's like the patience of when are we going to open the a ramp back up? But we need the patience of the public because when you see 50 dump trucks lined up with sand, it's waiting to get on. Because what they do, they bring in uh, <coughs> these huge dump trucks that they, they, they use on the beach, and they're like, I don't know, they have 10 tires, 12 tires. So the street truck dump trucks bring them in, they dump them at the end, and they have to load the other truck back up. So this is the time to think that this is, this is the best way, there was no way to go through all the bureaucracy with the core of the county to do the traditional way of pumping it the other way. So this is the quickest way to bring it in. But it's, it's, you know, we, we all, we all uh, get a little worked up when we get into uh, this, or when our seasonal guests come. So this is going to be similar to that. So it's going to be like traffic up for a while. Yeah, it's, it's quite an undertaking just driving by it. And uh, I can imagine 40 dump trucks lined up in the center of Gulf Boulevard. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the city manager? Greg, are you finished? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> now we're going to move to the city commission, Vice Mayor Bond. Do you have any questions or, or comments tonight? I had a couple of quick announcements. Um, just put my notes here. Um, it's regarding the Beach Arts Center. We're having face painting and arts and crafts inside the art center from one to six during Oktoberfest. So um, that's another kid-friendly event. Uh, and also the Holiday Arts and Crafts Fair on November 4th to 5th, um, where you can get a lot of your holiday shopping done. And then the IRB Tour of Homes is December 9th. You can go visit homes. Thank you very much. Commissioner uh, Lane? Yes, uh, Tom, I want you to know I donated blood on October 1st, and I'm heading back, and yes, they do give you a $20 no, bill gone. certificate. Hey, 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 thing, I'm uh, and, <laughs> and this month, for a limited time, you can get a Halloween t-shirt that says, I'm somebody who donates <laughs> blood. So, okay. uh, you can have mine if you'd like, Cookie. No, I, I can get one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Oktoberfest is this weekend. Uh, uh, Action 2000 has been working diligently on uh, making it a festival to remember. Uh, literally, we're going to have uh, more vendors than we've ever had before. Uh, we've managed to squeeze everyone into every nook and cranny. I want to thank the city for actually, and Dean, uh, for actually providing power for those special people who have requested it. And we look forward to seeing everybody here. Again, this is what brings our be together, the community. And seeing neighbors at an event like this. Uh, Tom, you mentioned you hurt yourself at the keg toss. Uh, I would suggest you try the Stein carry and carrying Steins around. If, I don't think you're going to hurt yourself on that. I'm trying to stay out on newspapers these days. Okay. 
but uh, we do have uh, a lot of activities. Again, we've partnered with the, with the Art Center. Uh, they are actually doing a dynamic job with us as well to provide uh, the entire family something to enjoy. Along with that, our Oktoberfest beer and the October uh, German dancers as well. So we look forward to that. But please come. Glenn, what, what is the time? It's on Saturday the 14th. What is the time? It is on Saturday the 14th. Uh, we are going to start at 12 o'clock sharp, and it only lasts for six hours. So it uh, mm. it's a crowd. I even hear that there's going to be a chicken dance. I'm going to hear there is always a chicken dance. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Commissioner Hosper? I have nothing to report this evening. Okay. Commissioner McCall? Well, I have something. Um, just uh, real quick, I do have an announcement here this evening. Um, kind of take you back a little bit uh, where I come from. Um, really, in 2011, when we moved here, um, we talked about a lot about the community, and, and I started, uh, my wife Tammy started volunteering with the Homeowners Association. Um, since then, became a local business owner, uh, ultimately became the president of the Homeowners Association. Um, now I already home, um, ultimately serving the last three years here on the City Commission. Um, however, uh, being in the financial service industry, I don't know if you people know, but I've uh, been in the financial service industry over the last 30 years, and um, financial privacy is kind of the cornerstone to both my private and personal life. Um, unfortunately, with the passage of Senate Bill 774 and the enhanced financial disclosure requirements in May of this year, uh, I've really come to uh, an impassable conflict uh, with my professional career and uh, the service to the city. Uh, so, regard, excuse me. Uh, basically, to this end, um, I'm announcing my resignation as city commissioner, effective 10:31-23. Thank you. Thank you. With that, um, I'm going to. So, um, I love Joe McCall, and years ago I went to him because I thought he would be an excellent commissioner, and he has been tremendous. We don't always go the like, but he has <coughs> done his due diligence, sometimes better than me, and um, uh, he will He's going to be greatly missed. And uh, with that, I'm going to go to additions and deletions. Greg, how do you want to handle this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Lauren, uh, in anticipation of that conversation with Joe, I'd ask under uh, additions and deletions under other, other business that we have a brief discussion about the path forward. The city code lays out the process. And Lauren and I have looked at the time frames and dates to, to, to suggest to the commission. If y'all would add that as other business, we can deal with that. Thank you, Greg. With that, I'm going to move on to the consent agenda. Uh, Randy, would you please read the consent agenda? Happily, Madam Mayor. Consent agenda for October 10th, 2023. There are four items on the consent agenda. Item A, approval of the September 6, 2023 Special City Commission Meeting Minutes. Item B, approval of the September 12, 2023 Regular City Commission Meeting Minutes. Item C, approval of the September 20, 2023 Special City Commission Meeting Minutes. Item D, authorizing the City Manager to award bid number IRB PWD 2023-01 and enter into a contract with Harbor Contracting LLC for the 2nd Street and 16th Avenue BMPs, parentheses Q341 in the amount of $419,827. These are the four items on the consent agenda, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'm looking for a motion. 
I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Thank you. And is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Lauren, would you please call the roll? Commissioner McCall? Yes. Commissioner Hasper? Yes. Commissioner Vaughn? Yes. Vice Mayor Vaughn? Yes. Mayor Kennedy? Yes. Motion carries. We do not have any public hearings tonight. We'll go on to other legislative matters. 7A, it's in ordinance number 2023-06. For the first reading, Randy, would you please read this? Happily, Madam Mayor, ordinance number 2023-06. An ordinance of the City of Indian Rock Beach, Florida, providing for an amendment to section 74-63, public bathing beach of the city's code of ordinances pertaining to the operation of vessels within the city's coastal waters in the Gulf of Mexico, providing for the incorporation of recitals, providing for an amendment to the city's code to remove the restriction on anchoring to conform with administrative guidance, providing for separability, providing for the repeal of all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing for an effective date. This has been a first reading of Ordinance 2023-06 by title only. Thank you. And Dean, would you present this? Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, Commissioner. Uh, yes, during December of 2022, the City Commission passed Ordinance 22-07, designating a section of the Coastal Beach Frontage as a swim zone. Subsequent to the adoption of that ordinance, Florida Fish and Wildlife, as Murphy's Law would have it, reviewed it again and provided additional legal insights concerning the ordinance consistency with administrative and legal guidelines in relation to anchoring within the uh, public bathing beach. The attached ordinance uh, correcting that is presented to you. Thank you. Um, that what they, they provided insight to us after we passed the original ordinance and in the if you look if you look at the attached ordinance yes. they didn't like the fact that we had that you could not uh, anchor they, in the ordinance so, so that question. has been redacted from the ordinance. so we can anchor now that's correct okay. yeah. as, as long as the vessel does not have a book so unmotored vessels can anchor, but motor vessels do not anchor. That's right. Um, that takes care of the so. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Unless you uh, I'm going to open the public open the public comment on this agenda item. Is there anyone who would like to come forward and speak? Hearing none, I will close the public comment and I'm looking for a motion on uh, Ordinance number 2023-06. I'll motion to approve Ordinance 2023-06, first reading. I'll second. Thank you. Is there any comment from the motion maker? Ma'am. Second? Second. Any questions? Uh, no, ma'am. Thank you. With that, Lauren, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Paul? Yes. Commissioner Hasper? Yes. Commissioner Vaughn? Yes. Vice Mayor Vaughn? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Thank you, Lori. With that, we will move on to our one discussion <coughs> item, which is on motorized bikes. And Randy, I will let you take it away. I'm going to be brief on this, which I know is hard to believe. Um, I, I provided you extensive information on the rec regulation of all modality of transportation. Um, this was particularly raised based on uh, Member Bonds questions about electric bicycles and the regulation thereof. Um, the longer, just so you, you're aware, the, there's a memo there that describes the change in the legislation as it relates to golf carts in 2023. And then um, after a slide deck, there's another longer white paper on um, all forms of transportation. That memo had been written before the 2023 update so that if you see any kind of dissonance there, that's why. But generally speaking, as it relates to electric bicycles, we have the ability as a local government to regulate their presence. Electric bicycles are treated as a bicycle for all other purposes. Um, however, a local government has the ability to adopt an ordinance governing the operation of electric bicycles on streets, highways, sidewalks, sidewalk area, bicycle paths, multi-use paths, trail networks, or a beach or dune as those terms are defined by statute. The original iteration of that statute did not include beach or dune, and so communities were having to fit their beaches and dunes into the, the well, this is like a park and this is like a trail, but it wasn't quite that. You want to go by the plain language of a statute where you can. 
And so with that um, amendment, some communities have evaluated whether or not they wish to regulate that, much as you can regulate these things on such things on a, on a sidewalk and all those other places. And so um, provided those are within your jurisdiction. And so with that, um, I leave it to you to um, argue um, as whether you wish to do anything with that information uh, or anything else in the materials. It's really your discussion to have. Absolutely. So, well, Start, Vice Mayor. All right. So, a couple of quick questions about that. If we are addressing electric bikes and where they're allowed or not allowed, are we then discussing that in its entirety, or are we just talking about the beach? Because, of course, I would imagine we don't necessarily want them on sidewalks. But that's whatever discussion you wish to have. I'm here. For. All right. Um, you want to start I, on the beach, or yeah, you want to yeah, start on the beach? I mean, that's the one that concerns people, I think. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that uh, electric bicycles should be prohibited from operating electrically on the beach. I think that, you know, there are some that are dual purpose that perhaps we could, I, I imagine there's some way of structuring it so that you're allowed to pedal your, your bicycle, but, um, but um, the motorized stuff seems to be bothering people. What's your take on it? Anyone have, you want to go ahead, Lance? Uh, anybody want to go I'll let Lance go first. Uh, I, would, I would venture to say that the, I, I agree with you. That I don't feel like they should be on a beach simply because of the speed that these are capable of. I don't think they should be on a sidewalk because of the speed they are capable of. Uh, many of our roads already have bicycle paths and bicycle lines that even our professional cyclists that get up at 5 o'clock in the morning are using. Uh, I think they need to be restricted, you know, off the beach. I think they need to be restricted to the bicycle paths as well. Uh, but again, I tend to be somewhat opinionated sometimes. Uh, there are various kinds. How do we de differentiate between a pedal modified electric bike as was in the presentation that we were presented, and one that goes 28 miles an hour, and one that goes perhaps 20. I, I think they're all one and the same. Um, Denise, or I don't know, just always seems like we have to pre disaster stuff, right? Because something's going to happen. And has anything happened? Have people been ran over by these electric bikes? Has anybody lost a foot? I mean, what's going on? Well, I, I can I can tell you stories from different cities where these scooters that have come on, and again, scooters are listed in this uh -huh. uh, under this as electric bike. Uh, you know, there are accidents that take people to the hospital. Okay. There. I mean, we have those guys riding those hoverboards. I mean, we have all sorts of stuff going on. I mean, are we going to outlaw anything like that on the beach? I'm under arrest. Anything that's working under power. Well, I think anything working under power, not only do we have a, a speed issue, but we also have the ability to further erode our beaches. And and that's one within the same. But Joe, I'd welcome your opinion on that as well. Well, as most of you know, I am an electric bike owner. Um, I didn't know that. I yep. do, yes. Um, I'm actually bringing commission meetings on occasion. Uh, not tonight. Um, the option of pedaling it on the beach is not. Um, if you don't own an electric bike, they're anywhere from 50 to 75 pounds. Um, it's without a pedal assist, without the motor, especially in a sand environment. Not you're now. not going anywhere. You're not, there's no way, yeah. right? Um, so I don't think that's an out. Um, I do 100% agree with Denise. Why are we looking for a problem? Um, we're trying to regulate ahead of that may happen in other cities. There's car crashes that happen every every time we give a report. We can't regulate everything up here. Um, the big discussion back in the day when it came from and before you guys were on here was golf carts, right? It was parking. It was cars. It was traffic. Well, you know what? Golf carts alleviated some of that. People can get downtown without driving their car. And you know what? Bikes do too. And it's a different mode of transportation that our people 
and honestly, our workforce, our waiters, our waitresses, the people that come down through here, utilize this mode of transportation to get here. Just sit on the bridge there by Omerton and watch them come across the bridge. They're going to work for Krabby's. They're going to work for different restaurants. And you know what? An electric bike's the way to do it. Um, it's easy. They're fat. I mean, <laughs> they're easy to control. They're inexpensive, more inexpensive than a car. Um, and honestly, our bike safety is not the best. I mean, try to ride in that two-foot lane down both sides of Gulf Boulevard. It's dicey. Yes. Um, I mean, I do ride it. And you need every bit of 25 mile an hour to stay with traffic. Um, you know, because like everybody's saying, we got tourists, we got everybody. We got 15,000 cars a day coming down Gulf Boulevard. You don't know who that is. Honestly, I don't know if they've been drinking or not. But all that goes through my mind as I try to get down Gulf Boulevard. Um, have I ridden on the sidewalk? Sure. I look down the sidewalk, make sure nobody's walking to cross that pass by the bridge to get downtown uh, where my office was. You know why? It's a lot safer for me up there. Um, I didn't hurt anybody. I mean, it's not like you're going 30 mile an hour at all times. I mean, people are courteous for the most part. Um, I, I just I just see it as a regulation for something that's not really an issue, um, personally. I mean, if, if we threw out when they came, when DOT came to us a couple years back and they wanted to make our whole, you know, our whole Gulf Boulevard bike friendly. You know, that was a proposal, I think, from Laura Pinellas or one of those folks like it is down in Reddington, um, where you have the whole street to ride your bike in, right? You have just as much right to that lane as the car does. We don't have that. And I mean, yeah, let cars that bike 30 mile an hour down Gulf Boulevard with their mirror about two feet from your head. Um, you do look for safer alternatives. Is the beach the proper place, I, though, for commuting? I possibly. I mean, if I, it's safer. It's safer. Yeah. Trust yeah, me. But I don't ride mine. I mean, I don't ride mine on the beach because it does tear them up. But I mean, can we look? Can, can we have any report on how many are going down every day? I mean, do we have 15 bikes riding down Gulf Boulevard all the time? All the time? I don't think right? that this is really a issue of commuters and workers and safety for bikers. Do we know? If, I, mean, do, I mean, do we know they're not working? No, but I'm not raising an issue about, about that. I'm just a, a raising the issue of safety on the beaches, not bike safety on the streets. May, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I mean, I could go either way. I'm voicing my opinion. I can be swayed. Uh, I've ridden bikes, motorcycles, but never an electric bike. Okay, so I don't know. Greg, do you have any data on this or any information you can provide us? Yeah, and nobody has any data on the number of bikes that brought up there a couple of or the beach. But I do want to, if I can just add to the conversation, um, Gulf Boulevard north of 5th, there's no bike lane. That line that you see on the side of the road, that's, just a, that's, a, that's for automobile. There was a proposal at one point, you know, it was rejected by the city to narrow the travel lanes for vehicles and then put bike lanes. Okay, I'm talking about But there's so much traffic, the public was overwhelmingly against that. So from 5th north, there's not, there's no bike lane. And I know we're going to speech, but the second thing is, and I'm obligated to say this, I'm not, I'm not, I promise you, I'm not saying to say this to try to steer y'all in any direction. But when, I, when we talk about ordinances through the years, I just want to, I'm obligated to, to say this, is that there are cities that have passed ordinances either against electric bikes on the beach, any shores there, and the little city north of us, which is Bel Bel Air Shore, Bel Air Shore, they don't want anybody on their beach. Don't walk there, don't, don't skip, don't do anything. But I want to say that if you, you, like any other ordinance you adopt, if you adopt it, we'll do our level best to enforce it. But here's the reality of it. If you adopt an ordinance that says, whatever, whatever criteria, the speed of the bike or all electric bikes or whatever, and you say they're not allowed in IRD, and that's published to the public, the expectation is that we can stop that. The reality is, the way this works, is if a person's on the third floor of a condo 
and they see how pickled Joe is that you're, you're stepping down. <laughs> Joe, Joe rides it, he's on his bike, and the lady on the third floor sees Joe and calls City Hall, or most likely calls the Sheriff's Office. By the time the deputy gets there, they're not there anymore. So you can put it on the books, and maybe a percentage of people will respect that and say, like, I, I can't do it, so I'm not going to do it. But I just want to, I want to balance what the reality is or what the expectations are, because there are people that I deal with daily in City Hall that if it's in the city code, thou shalt enforce it. And if you put this on the books, the real reality of it is by the time we we get there, most likely a deputy, because there we have two deputies on shift. It, what's the average speed of an electric bike, Joe? You got one. Let's go. 20. By the time we get there, you're in somewhere else. Probably going that way because you can't go that way. So anyway, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just, I just, I just am obligated to remind you that you can adopt whatever you want. But that's the reality. That's the reality of enforcement. So. However, we prohibit four wheelers. And Correct on the beach. We don't have any full wheelers on the beach. Well, I mean, Clearwater Marine does, but I mean, they're not. They're prohibited for anybody else to drive on the beach. Yeah. And I imagine that's by ordinance. Yes. And people respect it by not driving the four wheelers. Well, the reality is, unless somebody gets intoxicated, they're not going to get there. They're hilarious and drive on the beach. This is not going to happen. I don't think I don't think it's a respect of law. That people have you know, must have a level of common sense. They're just not going to do that. Hmm. I, I I don't know. Um. Jude, yeah. you were the one who brought this up. Yeah. And and I know you did. And so. Have you seen things um, that have bothered you? I back mean, when I could walk. <laughs> Which you will be walking soon. Back when I could walk, uh, I would walk the beach every night. Okay. Um, and they do tend to go at a higher speed than anything else on the sand. And kids, particularly when you get down fourth, that area, so they're running, families are all around, they're running hither and thither. Uh, there's no way kids are looking out for some dude flying by 20, 25 miles an hour. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that I'd like to prevent before it happens, despite the fact that it hasn't apparently happened yet to our knowledge. But neither has, you know, any terrible accidents in a golf cart yet we're examining how to make golf carts safer. Um, you know, it's, it mostly has to do with the fact that a kid doesn't have much of a chance against a high-speed bicycle on the beach when they have no idea it's going. And they're not even looking for it. There's nobody looking for that there, whereas in the street, they're looking for it. So, that's why. Ryan, any other comments? I don't, I mean, I can see both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see the concern, uh, but I don't see, I don't see an initial problem right now. That's kind of where I'm struggling. And, and I ride my motorcycle, and it's just as dangerous on the streets as, as uh, when I was riding the bike in the morning. So uh, I'm hoping that the individual that's riding the bike does it with a measure of responsibility and a measure of, of uh, doing it. But to Greg's point, I hate to put something on the books and then turn around and, and end up with uh, uh, there's so many other things we need to be looking at when it comes to code violations, in my opinion. That's like, I don't know, that's like saying, oh, we can't do this because we're really busy doing all sorts of other stuff. Okay. Um, I can respect that. Um, I just want to, there is one in particular, you know, I, when I go, because I'm at board, who is reckless. There is one. It's, it's the only one I ever see that's reckless. I see lots of others, but this one. Now, in saying that, to Greg's point, I can't tell you how many people call me about the dogs, okay? So we have a hard enough time trying to keep, you know, because we do have a law on the books as far as the dogs on the beach. And 
I guess my point in, in saying that is um, there are instances where um, this kind of thing happens, and there are going to sometimes there are gonna be people who are reckless. You know, there's always you know a bad egg. Um, I, I don't know. I I I, I know there's this one. It's and I don't know how many you see, but I know there's this one. There's a couple of one wheels down there too that go super yeah. fast. Um, but. This isn't obviously directed towards, at least mine isn't directed towards any individual in my query. Okay. Um, I can't think of a single person that, that is doing this that I'm aware of. But I do know that often during my walks I see them driving in ways that to me seems unsafe in that <coughs> driving. So. Okay. Uh, any other comments at this time? Because what I normally, I, I, if there's anyone in the, would like to comment, I was going to open the public comment just for a minute to come on up, just to hear uh, from the public and what their thoughts are. Gary Young, 1207 Bay Shore Boulevard. I ride my uh, electric bike up and down the beach because I can stay off the road that way. At least I can get part way up before I get to Bel Air Shores. Uh, I moved to Florida to be free. I'm from California. You know, we can start regulating everything here. That's fine here. You know, regulate umbrellas. They might blow away and poke somebody in the head. You know, that's what the, the next city is doing, you know. It just, I just feel like, you know, people come here to be free, to enjoy life, not be encumbered by all these ordinances that might happen. And that's about it. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this issue? Please state your name and your address. Jan Wilson, 711 Hidden Harbor Drive. I didn't come with the intention to speak on this, but I am a cyclist. And one thing you do need to look at on um, electric bikes or e-bikes are throttle versus non-throttle. There is a huge difference. Um, people on the throttle ones scare me to death, um, and I do have an e-bike. I will never have a throttle bike. You tend to get people who have the ones with throttles, your class twos, that really have no experience as a cyclist. So it can be scary. So I see your point, Judy. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? I just really come to hear Randy and uh, Greg, but uh, we'll, say, we'll say a few words tonight. I've been in front of the commission before about uh, motorized vehicles on the beach. John, I'm sorry, John Thayer, yes. 1819 Bay Boulevard, Indian Rock Beach. Um, and as far as I know, I try to look up the ordinance and I look at the sign at the beach accesses, all it says is authorized vehicles only. There's no definition whatsoever about what can be on the beach. At 10 o'clock at night, I've had a gas dirt bike roar by me on the beach, up and down, before. About two years ago, before, before a, on a holiday weekend, there was a guy setting up a powered paraglider at the 16th beach access with an unguarded prop, you know, just like this, getting ready to take off the beach right over the right over the park where all where the most people are. Um, some of these hoverboards can go 15 miles an hour. And one of them little kids turns around and runs for the water and gets hit hit at the ankles, they'll they'll, they'll lose both ankles. Okay? Um, I think we need to define what's allowed on the beach and what's not allowed on the beach. Um, and the safest way to do it, I think, would be to, to eliminate any kind of motorized stuff on the beach because you got to draw a line somewhere. Okay. That being said, we can't keep a dog off the beach. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're Anyone welcome. else would like to speak at this time? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public comment. 
Uh, this is a work session item. We can all think about this. Greg, do you want to do any follow-up with this now that you've heard the commission? Or mm -hmm. does the commission want Greg to do any follow-up? Hey, uh, well, I, I just heard this gentleman say our sign or a sign says authorized vehicles only. That's all we need. I know, I know that's all we need. What does that mean? That means whatever the, the city is authorized. So if you're a Texan family that is not authorized by the city, you'll be tied, tied, cited, arrested, whatever. You cannot, you can never criticize it. With, just say you wanted to criticize it. Oh, I, I get that, but what does it mean today? What's the definition of You do not get permission from the city, other than government, other than government entities like the federal. Okay. Because of their government entities. It means I can't drive my car. Right. It means I can't drive my motorcycle. Yes. It means I can't. Anything with a tag on it, you can't drive it. Okay, anything with a tag. Yeah. If I have the golf cart with no tag, can I drive it? No. Okay. So it also means a golf cart with no tag, which all of those are motorized. Yes. Okay. And there is an ordinance, by the way, uh, if you're wording exactly correctly, things taking off and landing on the benches are prohibited by the city code. So if that were there, after, that's the sheriff's office call. And we probably could get there in time for that. But okay. Okay. Provi provided they don't get to the water. I've actually had to research this in the communities. <laughs> if they're taking, once they're taking off from the water, that's lawful uh, activity, generally speaking. Now, of course, we have our swim <coughs> zone protections, so they couldn't take off from within the swim zone. Um, but if they're outside of the swim zone, we yeah. do have, um, they do have the right to take off in um, marine-based uh, airplanes, if you will, or um, aerial vehicles. But that's just a random curiosity, you know, what we're trying to regulate today. Are there tagged e-bikes? Yeah. Are there tagged e-bikes? Are, are e-bikes tagged or anything? No. So, it's a bicycle. No, it's a, it is, I think, I you know, it's a bicycle, it is a bicycle really in every right. measure uh, of, the, of the law. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think it's just the kind of place where people aren't looking for high-speed vehicles and it's asking for trouble to allow them. And can I, yes. since, since it was raised, can I address our beloved friend the dog for me? Yeah. <laughs> we will always have dogs on the beach. And the reason why we always have dogs, and I will tell you that we actively enforce that. And no, I know you that, do. Is that people know what the ADA law is. They know, they know, you can go on the internet and Google it. They know the questions, the only two questions that a law enforcement or a code person can ask you about your animal, and people know the answer. I, and that being said, the sheriff's office has, in the last, particularly the last couple of years, noticed and literally cited people for dogs. But dogs are kind of like making sure runs. They're not going away. Because people know how to play the system. It's kind of like, have you ever know, thought about the fact that, or looked at, looked into uh, handicap placards that hang off mirrors? People know how to play that game too. So uh, you know, I, I know we those things out. We get frustrated, and particularly about the dog thing. But that is being enforced as far as we can push it. But there are always going to be dogs in the beach. I'm sorry, but there it is. I'm not looking for high school. I'm just going to put it out there. Keep That's calling right. me, and I'll call an inquiry yeah. about the dogs. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, Okay, so I didn't at this dogs and I didn't know about the two questions. Yeah. At this time, <laughs> uh, I, we can just we can just take a, uh, a consensus. Is there a consensus to do anything else on this issue, or at this time, are we going to just table it and uh, kind of think about what was said today, and maybe at a later time we can talk about it again? What are, What are the thoughts? I'm not interested in pursuing it. Okay. I'm not. I won't leave the door open, but right now, uh, I'm totally interested in pursuing it. But, Joe, you're not going to be here next month? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so let's take this up at the so next So you got, you got that going for you. <laughs> All right, we will table that at this time. Oh, it's getting tipped. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, we are going to, this is under additions uh, for other business. And so, Greg is going to hand us out some paperwork as um, far as the seat. This is, be. this is something we can do. Yes. <laughs> the if, I could, if I just go through this top sheet real quick. And, yes. And, and what Lauren and I have done with the help of Randy and the cookie was going to be earlier. Yes, all this has been offered just to help 
move the process along. But Joe announced tonight that he's stepping down, and Joe, we're going to miss you. I'll hug you later. But Joe's been great, and I've worked with a lot of great commissioners since I've been here. But Joe, Joe asked a lot of good questions, been a good commissioner, and, I, and you've been, you've been, uh, and I could you ne never agree on 100 percent, but you've always been polite, and respectful, and, and uh, 15 years ago they didn't have that here, so thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. Uh, but here, so his, per his announcement, his last day would be on the commission would be October the 31st. There is a provision in the city charter that says that if a commissioner steps it down or resigns more than 45 days, the commission has to appoint somebody for that spot. So, and we'll, 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 we'll work our way through this. So what we came up with was, and there's an application form, and I suppose things we'll talk about in a second, but just talk about the timeline, is that if y'all approve what we're going to put before you tonight, we'll talk about is that the clerk tomorrow, based on your, your approval, would post uh, the application that we'll talk about in a second with the, with the report information attached to it. Individuals that want to, want to be considered by the commission, and it would be a vote of the commission to appoint whoever you want to appoint based on the application that you get. But if, if you could go with this process, we post it in the morning, the clerk would post it in the morning, and it would be open until November the 1st. And then what we were thinking of suggesting to the commission is that your regular meetings on November the 14th, <clears throat> that you could have a meeting at 4 o'clock to consider that, publicly consider the applicants for the, for the position, and then interview them, ask them questions, you know, you're probably going to know all of them, but you could have them all, we could have them all here, and you could interview, ask questions, and then at the regular meeting at, the, at 6 o'clock, we could have listed on the agenda the decision by the commission in other words I'll vote to appoint somebody and then at that very meeting then Randy could swear them in so we'd have a sitting commissioner. So we only would go about uh, two weeks with a you know out of commissioner like position. So if you look at the second page, and this is what Lauren drafted that would be uh, put out to the public, the notice of the vacancy references to you, know, you have to comply with ethics rules, <coughs> form six, which is what Joe referred to earlier. Because we do want people to understand that if you look, you're going to apply, you need to be aware of form six. And then lays out uh, the November first deadline if you agree with that, and then lays out the four o'clock meeting and the six o'clock meeting on the 14th. But probably this is important, or more important, or same importance. It's the back two or three pages. We took Laura. We took the the uh, this is Beach, we, you know, Beach had the same situation, so we just took the Bellar Beach application form and we tweaked it. But if y'all can just take a minute and just kind of look at that and see if we've missed something or if you want to add a question or whatever, but it's just basic information, name, address, home phone number, cell phone number, email, how long have you lived here, are you a registered voter, reason you're interested in serving, community activities, education, occupation, experience. Uh, questions about conflicts. Um, have you ever represented a person before the commission in the last two years? About financial interest, directly or indirectly. Uh, you're available on the third page. Their availability or your available evenings. You know, when, or make, making sure that whoever applies and you all appoint, they can be here. And then they sign it. Um, but that's the. That's the gist of this, and it's basic information. So there you can do this how you want. We just threw out this as a process in an application form, and y'all can do what you want to with this, but that's, that's what this is. So the form six, of course, is the deal breaker. Right. And won't it be a deal breaker for anybody that wants to, because they'll have to do the Form 6 too. No, because what I hear from my counterparts, like the, the other city managers in, in Dallas County, uh, some cities, nobody has resigned, and, and in some cities, and Randy speaks to cities all in the state, he can probably talk about this, you know, they might lose three out of five. Right. So there, there are still people out there, but unfortunately, it, it, it definitely just, it, Decreases the pool of people that right. run. 
And number one, you know, there's, there's people that don't want to get in politics at all. And then when you add this on top of it, they go like, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to tell everybody about my financial status yeah. to, do, to do this. So it definitely is going to have an impact on the number of people that are going to apply. Yeah, and to the extent Greg suggested I might have information, I mean, yes, there are some communities where at least the preliminary, we won't know until December 31st. Um, because that's when you, if you're in service, as my memo st stated to each of you, if you're in service come January 1, you're filling in a, filling out a Form 6. If it was truly an absolute deal breaker, you would see every commissioner resign. There will be people like-minded like you, provided none of you have made this personal decision at this stage. Um, somebody might serve. Um, it may change the nature of who serves or who, who does or does not have an interest, but um, I, I did want to add one thing that I don't know was, was clear in what Greg um, articulated. Based on your code, the way this would work is we would list the vacancy, you would make the appointment from qualified candidates and qualified meaning the registered voters in the city, etc. Um, that person will serve until the next regular election, which is in March. Um, and so whoever serves is serving from November to March. And they're eligible to run for that vacancy. Um, I, I don't remember, um, Joe, do you remember when your term is, would have been up had you not resigned? Mm -hmm. yeah. March. March. Yeah, March. So, so then, so then they would be running for a full term. And in, in, in Bellar Beach, which Greg alluded to, we have somebody who's running, they're, they're being appointed, they're serving, but it's midterm, so then they'll have to run for like the last year's worth of it. You're not having that year. Whoever runs in March will run for the full term of the seat, and that qualifying period is in December. Uh, but. I want to be very clear, whoever you're appointing will be serving from November to March, presuming you go by the schedule the manager has proposed. Any questions? I'll, I'll talk to the city manager after. Okay. And put, you're serving through March. Yes, yes. But the form does not have to be signed until January 1st. Which form are you, are you referring to the form, form six or the application? Six. Form six. The form six gets filled out, is due in May of next year, but it attaches to anybody who's serving as of January 1, 2023. And um, if, if you wish to get more detail on that, again, I provided a memo yeah. um, in, I believe, the first week of August or so on that point. And you can, we can talk about that once you've had an opportunity to review that, if any of you have specific questions. But this individual, because this individual, I'm sorry, uh, this individual, because they are under the new law, they have to fill it out prior to. No, I, I, I don't believe that's the case. I'm not saying you have to, to fill out a Form 6 before they qualify. It or run. once, once, they, once they, they will have to submit it by June, by May for their service okay. that goes over the new year. Um, but it will be back to that date, you know, the, the relevant date range. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was important to us in talking with, at the staff level, as we talked about producing these materials, that we were transparent about that. One of the challenges that I felt with this, with Senate Bill 774, one of the unfortunate things about how it was done was it was done immediately, and those there are plenty of people, Joe as an example, who did not know that was going to be the case. So they didn't say, for anybody elected after this day, it was, doesn't matter if you're in office, you gotta do it, and so it was important to us as somebody qualifies to make sure they go in knowing, and, and, and in case there's anybody who chooses to review this tape um, before they qualify for this vacancy or is otherwise present in the room, the top line of a Form 6 starts with a statement of your net worth. Um, and there's a very specific calculus for that. It's not just like what's in your bank account. Um, but there's a statement of your net worth at the top line, and after that you have to disclose assets and liabilities each over $1,000. If you have a prolific watch collection, gun collection, car collection, all of those sorts of things have to be disclosed. Um, and the same is true of your liabilities. And it's not just, currently our, our city officials fill out what is called a Form 1, and the Form 1 simply states my liability, like my mortgage is held by, you know, Barnett Bank. It's a big, that's not an issue. Um, you know, my, my mortgage is held by Barnett Bank without saying the exact quantum. This is a different, a whole other level of, of disclosure. It is called full financial disclosure, and it's important that as we put this out there, we absolutely wish to encourage the democratic process. Sir, you enjoy hearing my voice so much. By all means, get over here, I'll call you more. Um, but the, anybody doing that should do so knowingly and not volunteer for the position and then find out and create this loop of vacancy. After the fact. Correct. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, so. Um, yes. I'm sorry. So maybe just to summarize this. So if you look at the first sheet again, um, Joe's last day on the commission is the 31st. If you approve this process tomorrow, the clerk will post the notice in the application to close on November the 1st. Uh, we would schedule a meeting on November the 14th at 4 o'clock for the commission to interview applicants and ask questions. And that probably another time to say, are you aware of Form 6? And then, and then at 6 o'clock, we'd have it on the agenda for y'all to officially point somebody in and they could be sworn. So, Anybody, if any of y'all have an issue with this timeline or the schedule? No. Yeah, okay, so we, then we're looking, we have a motion on this, don't we? No. We um, don't? Okay. We're, we're just seeking your general consensus okay. approval of like, okay. hey, there's nothing, I don't have any issues, I'm not going to say, Greg, why did you list it this way? Greg has shown it to you. If you have any feedback, he wants it just so that the clerk and manager are prepared to, um, their plan presently is to, to begin publicizing this tomorrow. So this is more of a, Please let us know if you have input before we publish. Lynn? Nothing about this, no. I'm okay to rock and roll. I'm okay, too. Everybody okay? Twitter, are you okay? Jude? Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to request, if you're in town, that you come to the meeting. Right. Will you come to the meeting? Me? Yes. Sure. And then you can leave right after. Sure. Okay. I'd like to have Joe at the meeting at the beginning of the meeting. That would be okay? Okay. Well, it's a public meeting. Is he going to get like an award yeah. or something? Well, no. you know, do you Definitely have to tell not. everything? Definitely not. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to that for you. So okay. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Everybody's good with this. <laughs> three minutes. I'm going to give him three minutes. We're talking negative. All right. Um, with that, I'm going to move on to. Uh, we, there are there is absolutely no other business to come before this board and I'm looking for a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for coming tonight. We'll see you Aye. next week. <laughs> it's really because Denise is all the <laughs>